You're listening to Storage Nerds Podcast, where we unravel the best kept secret of the real estate investing world, the storage industry. Join the grassroots guru in self-storage, Stacy Rossetti, in insightful discussions about finding, funding, and running these spaces, allowing you to yield the highest returns possible. Get your foot in the door on self-storage and discover how to properly purchase facilities, negotiate with sellers, and close the deal without worries. Start unpacking that investment wisdom with Stacy right now. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about finding facilities, all right? But what I was going to do is go over some of the apps that I've been using uh, to find facilities so that you guys can have an idea of what those are. Now, um, for, uh, you know, for everybody that's here, uh, what I would like to do is, first of all, let me know in the chat if you've, like, been here before, okay? So just let me know. And, you know, how, is this your first time or have you been here before? Do you come often or, you know, or like, what did you know? How, I'd like to know how often are people coming to this? You know, is it like the same people over and over again? I typically get anywhere from like 30 to 50 people to show up to this thing. So I'm just wondering. And then, uh, and then secondly, okay. So the way that I typically teach is, you know, I teach finding funding, running, all right. Finding funding and running. All right. So on the first week of the month, it's kind of like an overview of like, you know, you know, how to get into self-storage. And then the second week is finding, which I think is this week, right? So, and then funding and then running, right? It's kind of how we do that. So just so you know, I, I there's a plan to the madness, okay? And what I want to say is that, you know, if you are serious about buying a storage facility, um, what you really need to be doing is coming here on a weekly basis, because the truth is, is that you cannot like learn how to invest in self-storage in like one session. And I can't keep teaching every Monday how to get started in self-storage investing, because it's just like the same thing over and over again. So about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, I started teaching on Monday nights and essentially every Monday night, it's a new topic, right? It's a brand new topic. So, um, so you have to come over the course of the next couple of months because really over the, over the course of the next couple of months, you'll get an idea of like all the nuances of self-storage investing. Okay, so I can't teach you everything, but if you do commit to coming on Monday nights, then you'll kind of learn the overview of how it works, all right? Now, what I tell my students all the time is that finding facilities of all of like investing in self-storage, finding a good deal is the hardest part of the whole deal. It's the hardest part, all right? And this is where actually pretty much I would say 80% of you all are going to be giving up because it takes a lot of time and effort to find a storage facility that fits into the parameters of what you're looking for. And the truth is, is that we all have different parameters. We all have different ways that we're looking at deals and different types of deals that we're looking at. You know, there's a lot of different ways to to look and to find, all right? What I want to say is finding facilities is the hardest part of the whole thing. Now, obviously, everybody in their mind thinks that the money is the hardest part, right? And now, you know, now during the next year or so, it's going to be, it's not going to be challenging. It's going to be, um, it's going to be those that can be creative win because obviously, you know, interest rates are super high. Right. And so when you have a really high interest rate, you have to you have to offer a really low purchase price. Right. And then, of course, sellers don't want to sell you a facility with a really low purchase price. Right. Because, you know, and of course, obviously, they just came out of the last two years where everybody was paying like top dollar and they got like a super low interest rate. Right. So it was like six one way, half a dozen the other. You got either high interest rates and low purchase price or you got low purchase price and high interest rates or like I said, you know, low interest rates and high purchase price, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, and so the funding part, you just have to learn how to be creative. You really have to just learn how to be creative. And we had like for our mastermind uh, this past Tuesday for storage nerds, we had Mark Helm come, come and talk. And I don't know if you guys know Mark Helm, but he's like the father of storage really in, in the United States. He's been doing storage longer than 
any of us like newbies have been doing it. And I've been doing it for like seven years. And, uh, and he basically, you know, he's basically his very first deal that he, he ever did was also very creative. And that kind of set him on the path to just thinking outside the box, right? Remember, I talked about this last week. There's a box, all right, in storage. And that box is I have to go to a bank and get a loan, right? And so everybody, 80% of you guys are thinking this. But the truth is, is that in real estate investing, you do not have to go to a bank and get a loan. Right now, going to a bank and get a loan and getting a loan most of the time is the cheapest money, right? But not right now, it's a little bit more expensive, right? But the truth is, is even when you're creative, a lot of the times uh, you pay high interest rates. I've always ever paid high interest rates. I've never paid a low interest rate. I have one of my investors gave me, he lent me money for 3%. That's because we've been doing it for 10 years. And he was like, you know what, Stacey, we've been doing this for 10 years. Just take this money. You can have it at 3%. But typically, you know, typically I'm like 8, 9, 10% interest for all the stuff that I borrow. Okay. So that means that I have to buy stuff at like 50 cents on the dollar in order to, you know, be able to afford stuff. Guess what? I'm buying my 16th storage facility right now. And it's 50 cents on the dollar. All right. So if I can do it, I, then you can do it. But guess what? In order, to me, in order for me to find 16 storage facilities that are 50% off, I have to do a lot of work. A lot. A lot of work. This is, I know I make it look easy, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay? So this stage, which I call stage one, which is finding storage facilities and then getting them under contract. Stage one is the hardest part of the entire process. All right. It is a numbers game. You can't just talk to five owners or look at what, look at a couple of deals and think you're going to find a storage facility. In fact, we call hundreds of thousands of owners on a weekly basis in order to find the deals that we purchase. Okay. And I wish I had enough money to buy all the deals that I found, right? But um, I don't have that much money. But when you start getting into calling owners and talking to owners, then um, you're going to find deals, right? It's just that, you know, it's a numbers game. Now, every once in a while, you'll find what's like, oh, I just called this, this, like, I have like, like this student, Sarah, she's like the first person I called, like, we're getting it under contract. And like, Eddie, like the first person I called, you know, but most of the time, it's going to take a lot of time. So the, the rule is, for every 50 owners, one is going to want to sell. For every 50 owners, one is going to want to sell, all right? Now, what I just said was for every 50 owners, one's going to want to sell. I didn't say for every 50 calls. I said for one for every 50 owners. That's about what we're seeing, for one for every 50 owners. So that means how many calls do you have to make in order to find an uh, now, in order to find an owner that wants to sell. Now, remember, there's two different types of uh, there's two different types of owners in the industry. Okay, first there is owners like what who I call, which is cold calling owners that have not been thinking about selling at all. Okay, when you cold call an owner, you're just like, you know, randomly calling this person. They don't have numbers ready. They don't have their P&L ready. They don't have their books ready, right? This is a totally different strategy than going and hiring a realtor to find you a facility or going on to Crexy and finding you a facility. Because those types of owners they want to sell, right? Because realtors are only going to find owners that are listed. Like realtors don't go off and go and find off-market properties. Every once in a while, you hear about this, but this has not happened really ever, okay? Because I mean, in order for them to get paid, they have to put the deal under contract. So that really means that you're getting it from a realtor and they're going to have to get paid. So there's two different types of owners, all right? Remember, there's the... The ones that you're calling and they weren't even thinking about selling. And then there's the ones that are um, listed either on MLS 
Crexy, MoopNet, you know, all the different types of outlets out there for commercial property. Okay. So that is what we're looking for. All right. That is what we're looking for when I say finding facilities. Okay. And when I say finding facilities, now I have a couple of land, I have a couple of apps here. One of the apps, like, I don't know if it's going to work because the internet sucks. Actually, it's not working because I just pushed it. It's not opening up. So, but one of the apps that I, that I use, okay, so basically what I do to find storage, if you have not followed me, uh, is that I go on to Google and I find, we find, we do, we look either on Google listings or we go, we virtually drive for storage, okay? And um, so now when I first started out, I, I like actually drove for storage. And actually, I feel like one of the best ways to find storage, honestly, is to just get out there and drive. Because driving for storage equals market research. All right. Driving for storage equals mar mar market research. OK, so I would just drive. I, I've been I like I've literally driven the entire state of Georgia and I've seen probably every storage facility um, in Georgia. Honestly, I've told you, I've seen almost every storage facility in Georgia and I'm almost there with like the north part of Florida. I've gotten out and I've driven and looked for Florida's in like the pan in Florida, the panhandle of Florida. And then also like north of Orlando, right? Actually, I've even gone south of Orlando. I've done a lot of it too. So because everywhere I go, I drive for storage. In fact, I lived in an RV for for a while. Not six years, but on and off for six years, we lived in an RV and um, traveled. And uh, so we've done a lot of driving for storage and stuff. Can you all hear that? That's my dog. Hopefully y'all cannot hear that. Uh, she's outside my door and uh, she's like super old and she has a um, she has a collapsed trachea, right? So she's always coughing, always. Does anybody, anybody ever have a dog that's like collapsed trachea? I don't, tell me if y'all can hear her or not because I can go and put her in a different room. But um, so she's outside my door just like scratching and coughing. So just so you know. So, okay. So we drive for storage. That's like, I'm telling you, this is what I personally like. I would love just to be able to just get out there and drive for storage. That's like my thing. And then talk to the owners. So my husband, Pete, is the one that manages all of our storage facilities. And he left uh, at three o'clock to go to one of our facilities. And he's hiring a boots on the ground person. So Lillian is here like by herself. That's my daughter. And she like I said, you could just like watch a movie while I'm teaching. Right. From, I'm teaching right now. And so we went and of course, the Internet's not working. So she's like, I'm bored. You know, that's kind of how she is. So I was just making sure she was OK. So I'm trying to hold down the fort, essentially, what I'm trying to do. OK, so anyway, so we drive for storage. We've been driving. I've been driving for storage since day one of, uh, of investing in self-storage and driving for storage equals market research. So number one, how do you find storage facilities? Honestly, the best way is to get out there and drive for storage. I know a lot of people say, oh, my gosh, it's like too much. But the truth is, is that driving for storage equals market research. You're, if you're interested in an area like to, to invest and buy storage, you should really get out there and drive around and you should look at all the storage facilities. What types of facilities are there? Are there, is it a primary market? Is it a secondary market? Is it a tertiary market? And really kind of educate yourself on what the market looks like. What type of, there's there, is there like climate control, boat and RV parking, you know, this kind of a thing, right? So so you get out there and you really just educate yourself. And then what you do is if you do decide to drive for storage, okay, uh, then if you find a storage facility, say, you know what, this is kind of like my style. This is what I'm looking for, whatever it is. If it's like climate control or RV or just a little tiny facility, whatever type of facility it is. And then the best part about driving for storage is that the phone number is on the sign. The phone number is on the sign. So you can just call and talk to the owner. And I would say probably maybe 20% of the time, a uh, if it's a bigger facility, obviously you'll have a manager, but like 20% of the, of the time, small facilities, the, uh, the office manager will answer, but typically you'll have the owner manage on, on uh, the owner answer the phone on most of the facilities. Because you know that 30% of all, 30% of all 
uh, facilities in the industry are owned by REITs and 70% are owned by mom and pops, just like us, right? So, so you're going to always like, you're going to, a lot of times you're going to get owners to answer the phone. I'm going to tell y'all. No, actually. Okay. So the issue is there's two issues. One issue is owners will answer. Owners will not answer the phone, right? Because like the, that's the one thing with storage facilities is that people do not answer the phones. They do not, like if you're full, like if, if they're full, they just don't answer the phone. They're like, why would I answer the phone? I'm full, you know? And, you know, they don't want to do a wait list or anything like that. So if they don't answer the phone, then obviously, you know, to put it on a list and to follow up. And then when you do answer the phone, right, then essentially you're just going to introduce yourself and say, look, you're the, I, you know, my name is Stacy. And the truth is, is that I'm just calling all the owners in the area to see if you're interested in getting an offer. I really want to buy my very first storage facility. And so I figured I would just call and introduce myself. This is the area where I want to buy the storage facility. So I figured, you know, I live in this area or this is where my, you know, my family lives. So I decided to look in this area. And you just have to be like, when you talk to owners, you just have to be as authentic and personable as possible, right? You got to be like, you got to connect. It's on the phone or, you know, and uh, pretty much like out of the 11 facilities that we own personally, uh, I found like probably half of those, uh, I just, I really was just driving past the facility and I called the facility up and said, hey, you know, I'm just driving past your facility. I'm, I'm calling everybody in the area. And I was, I was interested, I was wondering if you'd be interested in getting an offer on your facility. And that is how I got my facilities under contract. All right. So, um, and this works very, very, very well in tertiary markets. When I am, when I say tertiary market, I mean country, right? That's what I mean, like country. All right. So secondary market is like, you know, like a big town that's in the middle of nowhere. And then the primary markets, obviously, like the major cities and the suburbs and stuff. OK, so but but driving for storage works very, very well in tertiary markets. Right. And so that's my favorite way, honestly, to find uh, storage facilities, driving for storage. So if you've been following me, you know that I saw a lot of people here. It was their first time. So. I showed up. I show up every Monday. Good. Noel, John. I mean, uh, yeah, perfect. I love it. I'm here every Monday. So just come listen. Oh, Kevin, LOI submitted to Franco and Augusta. Good. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so that's good. Okay. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay. So driving for storage equals market research. And if you really want to get into the game, highly recommend that you just drive around, really educate yourself about the area, right? And then, you know, just try to talk to a couple of owners. And the truth is, is like I said, 70% of the owners in storage are just like us. I mean, they're just like regular people, okay? 30% are going to be bigger players. And you're going to find those in like large secondary markets and then like you know suburbs and primary markets you know but like most of us we want to just get our foot in the door so we're going to be in like smaller primary markets and tertiary markets and that is where you really truly can just call owners and talk to them and um you know see if they're interested in getting an offer you never want to ask anybody if they want to sell all right you want to ask them if they would be interested in getting an offer okay Okay, so that's number one, driving for storage. Number two is virtually driving for storage. Virtually driving for storage. Okay, so virtually driving for storage um, is uh, what I mean by that is Google Maps. And if I could show you, I would, but essentially you're going to pull up Google Maps. What you're going to do, the first thing that you really should do is just do storage near me. Okay, storage near me. And uh, and then that way you can kind of get an idea of who the players are around you, right? Is it like big names like Cube Smart, Extra Space, you know, public storage? Or do you live like in a smaller area where you're seeing like, you know, B and B storage and and uh, AAA? There's a lot of AAA storages, you know, because back in the day you wanted to be like the first one in the yellow book, right? So you do like A and A storage and AAA storages. You know, if you see a AAA storage or a and storage, you'd know that one. That facility's been around for a long time, right? And even if they have like regular names like B&B &B storage and G, we got a G and G storage right now that we're working on. Uh, and we got, you know, we got like, we got a lot of storeaways and like store your junks and stuff. I mean, 
that's some older names now. A lot of people, the newer names, you know, you're getting a little bit more, a little more, a little more savvy, you know, you're getting some, some smarter names, but um, back in the day, it was a lot of triple A's. And so you're going to just look at Google Maps and you're going to really like, so the thing with Google Maps that I tell everybody is that you, in order to get onto Google Maps, it requires a lot of work. It really does. It requires a lot of work. Have you ever put a business on Google Maps? Then uh, essentially, it just you just know that it takes a lot of effort, time, and effort. Okay, so you're gonna go on to uh, like if you're gonna get if you're gonna set a business up. You're going to go on to Google profile, Google profile listings, I think is what they call it. I can't remember what they call it, actually. It's like Google My Business or like they change the name, like every couple of years they change the name. So it's like Google My Business or Google profile listings or something. And you see, uh, and so Google Maps is, the, is actually the fastest growing search engine in the country. And, uh, and almost, you know, it's growing very fast, even across the world, it's growing, but in the country, it's the fastest growing search engine. I mean, if just think about it, if you need something, you just go on to like Google Maps, right? And, uh, you know, that's what I do too, right? But the truth is, is that in order to get onto Google Maps, you have to like go through the process of the Google business profile listings process and like to get through that process like supposedly it's easy but it's really actually not easy like to to be verified to be a business on google maps is quite an obstacle and it could take several months to do in fact every once in a while we'll get like one we'll get like a business that just like immediately gets put onto google but then sometimes it takes like months like our blairsville facility it took months to get us on uh to get us on google maps and they wanted us to go there and video the place and show the sign. And like, you had to be there present to like actually say, yes, this is my business, all right? And then, uh, you know, and then sometimes they'll send you a postcard with some codes on it. So you get in, you get in, you set your profile up, you get them to mail you a postcard, they mail you the postcard with the code on it, and you have to go back in, and you have to put the code in, and then you have to set the rest of the stuff up. And it's really actually kind of a lot of work. And um, so guess what? A lot of storage facilities are not on Google Maps. <gasps> Who would have thunk, right? Who would have thunk? A lot of storage facilities are not on Google Maps, and I call those the hidden market. And um, so we really, my virtual assistants look for uh, properties that are not on Google Maps. How do you do that? You do that by virtually driving for storage. It kind of sucks. It takes a long time, right? But my, my virtual assistants have gotten so good at it. Oh my gosh, they get so, they're so good at it. And you know, what my virtual assistants do essentially is they'll spend like half a day they like, you know, spend a couple hours until they can't stand it anymore, virtually driving for storage, and then they'll build their list. They put the list on the sheet, right? They'll also go into Google Maps. And obviously going onto Google Maps and putting like storage in this area or, you know, warehouses or many warehouses and then like searching all the different names, then you, that all that pops up and then you put it onto your list, right? But finding those ones that are not on Google Maps, that's really what's the tedious work and uh, so you want to spend some time really building that list up. And the way that you do that is virtually driving for storage. You really, you go onto satellite imagery th uh, through Google Maps and you'll go into a town. Let's just say you pull up some town and you're like, you know, small town in your area. It has maybe anywhere from like, you know, 10 to 30,000 people in it, let's say, right? And you pull it up and you can type in the word storage and you'll see all these storage facilities popping up and you'll put them onto your list. Guess what? There's going to be a handful of storage facilities in that town that are not on Google Maps. And your job is to find those, those, because those that are not on Google Maps, those are the ones that you really want to contact. And um, a lot of times too, you'll find like an abandoned storage facility as well. Uh, and uh, we've actually bought ab abandoned storage facilities and um, we found them either driving for storage or uh, virtually driving for storage, okay? And, uh, and you get the best deals when you find an abandoned storage facility, right? <sighs> yeah, we bought one that was like 150 grand and it was it's worth like 600 grand right now, you know? So 
Um, so you could really find some good deals. And we just found that one driving for storage, or I can't remember if it was driving for storage or virtually driving for storage. So you're going to get on there, super tedious work, right? But if you're like, you know, detail oriented, then you need to get into Google Maps and search through these towns. And even these little tiny towns, like in between the bigger towns, these all have storage in them. And most of the time, those are not on Google Maps. You know, you'll have, if there's a town of, you know, a couple thousand, and if there's a couple hundred people, there'll be a storage facility. In fact, we own a storage facility in a town of 400. Like it's called Warm Springs, Georgia, if you know that area. And we bought a store at 60 units and we bought it. I bought it just because I drove, I was driving for storage. I called the owner and talked to her and she's like, yeah, my husband just died. She's like, I really don't want this thing. I was like, can I buy it? 60 units and I picked it up for a hundred grand and um it was only one of the first ones that I bought and that thing's probably worth around 400 grand I mean it's 60 units it's not quite like at you know 80 cents a square foot but I think it's pretty close to 80 cents a square foot and you know we really try to get we really try to push our our price per square foot to be 80 cents a square foot 80 or higher is where we're kind of at and uh, in the southeast now some areas a little bit a little bit lower but there's some areas that are like super low and you really you know you just need to be careful about those areas but i think over time the price is going to be around 80 cents a square foot but um yes so we have a facility in uh warm springs georgia i mean y'all can search it i mean our the name of our company is miss lillian self-storage we have two miss lillian self-storage and then mission self-storage is, is our two we have 11 facilities under miss lillian's and then we have two under mission right now we're about to buy another one under mission. We're closing at the end of this month. And uh, and then we're picking up, we have another one under mission that we're closing next month. We're picking up the one in Tennessee as well. So, um, so you could just Google us if you want to. And so Warm Springs is a little tiny storage facility. It's like 60 units. And we picked it up for a hundred grand. And, uh, you know, and it took us a good maybe year or so to fill it. It was all filled with just like the owner's junk that like all their family members have been using it. And that's it. It took us a good year or so to fill that thing up, you know, because it's a small town, you know, so you just have to know that it's just going to take a little while to fill it up. But you know what the truth is, is like we haven't been to that facility probably in like a year. We have a uh, we have a lawn maintenance guy that lives like literally right around the corner and he mows that thing and then he changes the lock for us on the gate every month. And that's it. You know, and then every once in a while our boots on the ground person will go out there and take a look at it, make sure it's okay and stuff. That's it. You know, we paid a hundred grand and we'll probably sell that thing for at least four hundred grand when we're gonna sell it, right? So so that's pretty good, right? For not even just going out there and doing anything to it. And it's been full for, it's been full for at least, uh, at least a year or two, a year, a year, if not longer. I'm not sure. We've had it for like maybe three years now. So it's been full for a while, but, um, you know, for just not doing anything, you know, just doesn't take a lot of work, but we found that that's a tertiary market. And everybody always asks me, like, can you buy facilities in small markets? I mean, the truth is, is like, how much money do you got? If you don't got a lot of money, then you should be looking at a tertiary market. When I first started, I didn't have any money. So I, bought a, I got a facility, I got borrowed $100,000 from somebody and I paid 9% interest for it. Got it filled up. You know, my mortgage, I think is like, yeah, my mortgage is like maybe $900 a month on it, something like that. You know, and I, we're making, we're making like three, $4,000 on it right now. So it's doing pretty good. Anyways, so um so yeah, you're not going to make a lot, a lot of money on it. You know, every month you're not going to make that much cash flow on it. But in the end, you'll be able to sell it and make some money on the back end too. So you'll make a little bit of cash flow and then you'll make some money on the back end, right? So, okay. So driving for storage. Now Google Maps, all right? Just virtually looking for property on Google Maps. And I've done a lot of videos on that on YouTube. So make sure you go to my YouTube channel and just type in, you know, Google Maps, Stacey Rossetti or something like this. And if you want to see me virtually driving for storage, just watch those videos, okay? Because I can't show you today, unfortunately. Now, some apps. I wanted to show y'all, uh, I wanted to tell y'all about Landglide. So when I am virtually driving for storage, this is my process, okay? My process is Landglide and Google Maps together. Landglide and Google Maps. Now, Landglide costs $10 a month. So there's a, there's a couple of different uh, apps out there. 
One of them is parceled, parceled, and then the uh, and then there's uh, and then there's regrid, and then there's a land glide. And I'm sure there's some other ones I don't even know about, right? But those are the three that we kind of like talk about in the in our coaching program a lot. Parceled is free. All right. And then regret and regret is also free. Those are both free. And then land glide is $10 a month. Now, why do I pay $10 a month? Because land glide gives you everything that you need to know about that property in like a snapshot. All right. So you don't have to go around searching for anything. Whereas parcel and regret, they do like, oh, you need that information. You should just upgrade to the pro version. That's kind of how they do it. So they give you a little bit of information. And if you want more information, you have to upgrade to pro. That's kind of how they do it, okay? So I just don't want to mess around with that. So I just pay $10 a month, all right? When, when I'm out driving for storage, I have Google Maps up and I have Land Glide up. And actually my husband drives, a lot of the times my husband drives because I've gotten so good at driving for storage that essentially we'll be going down some back roads and I'm sitting there and what I like about Land Glide is that it gives you the borders of the property, but it also tells you who the owner are, owner is and um, kind of gives you all the information. And uh, so, yeah, so for Land Glide, and you can't really see, you can't, you can't uh, see, I, if I had it up, I could show you on the thing. There's also a desktop version for Land Glide. Okay, so that's included into your monthly uh, payment. And I think that's also for regrade. You can do that. I'm not sure about parcels. If anybody knows, y'all can tell me. But um, but so part, so uh, land glide, let me pull it up here. I'll just show you what it looks like. If I can in here. Land glide, yeah. Land glide, and like the, the whole thing, I don't know if you could see this. Uh, yeah, so the land glide looks like, yeah, so you could see. Okay, so yeah. Okay, yeah, this is good. This is perfect right here. Okay, so there's my house, Davis Charles. It hasn't switched over to the, I just bought this house like a couple months ago. So it hasn't switched over to the, um, to the new name yet. All right. It takes a little while. And then, you know, but you can come out, right. So you could come out, you could see like all different kinds of parcels and stuff. So right, all different kinds, like the boundaries, those are all like the boundaries of the houses. Okay. The boundaries of the properties. In fact, oh yeah. So I was driving down Mayhem. I live in Tallahassee for everybody who doesn't know. Let me find myself. Yeah, so let me find myself. And uh, yeah, so I was driving down Mayhem to go to, to the store and to see Publix. I went to Publix. Where's Publix at? And um, I accidentally, like randomly turned into this property. And I'm looking for a pro I'm looking for a piece of land that I can buy. Um that's going to be at least a minimum of five acres, if not more. And, uh, you know, so I've been kind of sort of looking around for this. And, uh, yeah, I turned into this property and it was like this vacant property. And I was like, oh, this is like, this would be perfect. I want to buy this thing. And all I had to do was just come on to, uh, to Land Glide. And then I like when I was right there. You see, you just like you just have the, you know, the GPS button. So I just touched the GPS and it took me right to that property. And it took me who the, it tells you who the owner is and how to get in contact with them. Now, it doesn't give you a phone number or an email, but it does give you their information, their contact information, their, their address and stuff. So um, so I use it. I use it not only for storage, but I like every real estate. So every property in the country is on Land Glide and all the information that uh, that you you know you want to know about the property is there. Parcel is the same way. Regrid is the same way. All my virtual assistants they all use Regrid, so I don't want to pay ten dollars a month for each one of you know for everybody to use that. So they just use Regrid and they pull up as much information as they can. And then if we happen to need any more information about the property. We'll either look on Landglide or we'll look on Crexy, right? And Crexy does not have an app. Or actually, I think it does have an app, actually, but I don't get onto the app because the app is too it's too difficult to work through. Um, so Crexy I use on Dex desktop. And Crexy is used like, you know, to also pull up oh, the information of the property. But Crexy costs a lot of money. It costs like 150 bucks a month or something. Okay. Uh, but um, but uh but land glide is only ten dollars a month, and when I'm driving around, I am driving. I'm like going into an area and saying storage near me, and I'm looking at all the storage facilities on Google Maps, 
And then I'm starting to virtually drive for storage. Like as we're driving around, we're like, okay, there's a storage facility here. There's a storage facility here. Let me look on Google Maps and see if I can find the property. Or let me look on Land Glide because you can also use Land Glide as like, you know, a Google Maps version, okay? So that's what I do is I use Land Glide and Google Maps together. And then what I do is when I find a property, so let's see, uh, yeah, so let's say I found this property. This is my property where I live, okay? I'm gonna change it to a satellite view. And uh, yeah, satellite view, right? So here's my property, okay? And you can see satellite view. This is how I this is how I drive virtually drive for storage is like this. And then you can see who the owner right there. Uh, you could see the information for the owner, right? There's the address. And uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just like screenshot that because essentially when you're right in front of the facility and then you screenshot it, like it, it, it keeps that location in your screenshot, right? So if you need to go back, you can always look back as well too. So we do a lot, I do a lot of screenshotting in uh, Google Maps or Landline. And then let's just say, and then what I also do is then I just open up the tab, right? So I just, you can just click on the bottom here and then it comes in and it starts giving you like all the information, okay? And, uh, and then I will screenshot this as well, or I can, and I screenshot all this information, okay? As I'm driving around, there's a lot going on, right? So I'm uh, driving for storage. I'm not like jamming out to Bon Jovi, all right? You know, I'm just like chilling, trying to focus, be aware. And I'm driving around and I'm searching on Google for Google Maps. I'm, uh, I have Land Glide up, I'm, and I'm sorry, I have Land Glide up. So I'm uh, looking for storage facilities that, that way, looking for the owner's information that way searching for storage facilities on Google Maps and virtually trying to find storage facilities that are hidden and also there, right? Already, already on Google Maps. And then as I'm doing that, I'm taking screenshots. And then once I get to the storage facility, I'm taking pictures, pictures of the facility, right? So that I can remember the facility because the truth is, is like every storage facility looks exactly the same, honestly. And there's like no difference in any storage facility. And I, you know, the very the first hundred, I think I remembered. And then after a hundred, I mean, I'm going to like 16,000 storage facilities we have in our database right now. So like we take pictures and then what we do, right. And then what we do with our, with our stuff from the phone. So now we have our land glide screenshots, right. And our Google, you know, Google maps. Sometimes we take screenshots there if we need locations and stuff. And then we have pictures from Google photos. All right, so those are like the three things that I have when I'm going driving for storage or if I'm looking for storage facilities, okay? And then what I do is I just start a Google Drive folder, not a Google Drive folder. I start a Google Photos photo uh, folder, a Google, Google, full, a Google Photos folder. Oh, that's hard to say. Google Photos folder, okay? You don't know how to do that. And then because we back up all of our stuff to Google, whatever you want to back it up to, whatever system that you want to use, just use that. And then we create a folder. Let's say it's like driving for storage Tallahassee. Okay, that's what we call it. And then uh, and then all those pictures go into that folder. So I'm immediately putting all those pictures into the folder. So I don't do that later, come back and look at it or something like that, you know, because once you like, once you stop doing this, you just totally forget, right? Anyway, so like as I'm going, I'm putting them into this Google Photos folder. I'm calling it Driving for Storage Tallahassee. And then when I come back home, after I've done my half a day of driving, my full day of driving, right? I'm looking at, looking at my apps or looking on the blank slide. Then what I'm doing is coming back and putting all that information into our contact sheet that we keep. We keep it either like on a spreadsheet or I use some sort of software to keep track of our contacts, right? Okay, so the key is your goal is not to get out there and drive and make a whole, oh, I took, I took, you know, a hundred pictures of storage facilities and I got like so much stuff and then they just like sit on your phone, right? 
Your goal is to get those onto your contact sheet. But the truth is, is that the key is in the follow-up. The key is in calling those people, keeping track of who you're talking to. And then did you send them a letter? Did you call them? Did you leave a voicemail? Did you text them? Whatever it is that you're doing, you got to keep track of that because the truth is, is the key is in the follow-up and you have to have this system where you're building these lists. So you don't have to go driving for storage if you don't want to, but I do. But even if you're building a list from Google Maps or virtually driving for storage, you wanna have that list that you're building. Now, you can go out and buy a list of storage facilities. I've done it. I've done it. I bought like, I bought several states and spent a lot of money because it's quite a bit of money to, to buy these lists. So I spent thousands and thousands of dollars. But the truth is, is that those lists are only so good. I mean, Google Maps, I feel like has the most up-to-date information. I really feel like using Google Maps because, you know, even when a business comes and goes, if somebody else buys it, they, they, they claim that Google business listing and then they take over and that's the new name of the company, right? So the Google Maps, a lot of times it's very relevant. Like I've, I hardly ever find non-relevant, you know, um, stuff on Google Maps. Now there are, there are some, there is a lot, of, you know, there is stuff that's like, okay, it's been sitting there and it just hasn't been, you know, doesn't belong to anybody anymore. But a lot of times it's, 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 it's up to date, you know, now the, they, they may not have a website, they may not have a phone number, they might not have everything filled out because they haven't figured out how to do that, right? But, you know, if I was going to buy a facility that was a, a facility on Google Maps, the, which is exactly what we're doing right now, the very first thing, one of the very first things that we do when we buy the facility is claim that listing. And then we bring it over to us and own it. We may not use that listing, but we want to own that listing and maybe start a new one. Or you, if it has like a whole bunch of reviews on it, that's awesome. Then we'll keep that listing, right? But if it's like by, you know, bad reviews and we're not going to use it, but at least we own that one, right? Because what happens is if you don't own it and you don't get rid of it, when you put your new one up, there'll be two. Have you ever seen any businesses where there's like two Google listings in the same spot? That's because somebody started a new one and didn't claim the old one. All right. So I got to jump off and I got to go to my fund pitch. Okay. So I uh, apologize for being late, but um, you know, but I, but I showed up, so that's good. And at least I kind of gave, gave you some tips on finding facilities. Okay. And then just remember that you have access to my course. Okay. So go to stacyrosetti.com and I will take you through step by step by step, hold your hand, show you everything that you need to know. And you can get it done, like, not in 90 days. Coming here over the course of 90 days, you'll get a better idea. But the course, you'll be done in just like a couple couple days or a couple of weeks. It depends on how long you want to take. All right. And um, there's like there's like between 75 and 100 videos on uh, the course. And they're all just right there. So you, And it takes you kind of step by step by step. Okay. So that's available to you. You just have to go to uh, stacyrosetti.com in order to find that. And then also don't forget too that you have access to my deal analyzer. I mean, basically when I talk to people, what they say is, I don't know if it's a good deal. I, don't, I found a facility, but is it a good deal? Well, guess what? All you need is my deal analyzer, plug the numbers in, right? And it will tell you if it's a good deal or not. Red is not good and green is good, right? And it will actually help you come up with some offers for the property. So please check that out as well too, all right, on the website, because those are available to you. And having those together with this, I'm going to tell you, it's like almost having a coach, you know? So, um, so check those out, please. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go hop onto my fund. If you want to be a passive investor and you have money and you don't want to do all the work, but I'm telling you that's like hard to do, you should just lend your money out to me. And so hop on to stacyrosetti.com slash fund, F-U-N-D. And I'm going to go over my fund, which is the Self Storage Fund of America and uh, pitch it right now, okay? All right, I will see you guys next Monday. Take care. 
thank you for joining us for this episode of Storage Nerds. Hope this informative conversation inspired you to go out there and jump into this highly profitable business venture that people rarely talk about. Get more tips on storage space investing at www.stacyrosetti.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave a rating. Together, let's build that thriving passive income one storage space at a time. Until next time.